Democratic stability and economic stability go hand in hand. On Wall Street, the outcome of U.S. presidential contests don't typically have a drastic impact. The result investors fear is, of course, uncertainty. Economists are warning a constitutional crisis could trigger a market sell-off sell and wreak havoc on the value of the U.S. dollar. Real reliability around a smooth transition of power has been one of the U.S. economy's greatest assets. Joe Biden responded to Trump's comments by asking, what country are we in? What country are we in? I'm being facetious. I said, what country are we in? Look, I... He says the most irrational things. I, I don't know what to say about it, but it does surprise me. Modern history is littered with economies that have been ravaged when democracy fails. Zimbabwe, once Africa's breadbasket, collapsed under 40 years of Robert Mugabe. The U.S. and Europe applied sanctions for rigged elections, economic mismanagement, inflation and droughts hit hard. Last year in Bolivia, a contested election led to social unrest and growth evaporated. A new election is planned for next month, but Moody's already issued a new downgrade, believing the damage is done. And most recently, we've seen Belarus. Alexander Lukashenko was inaugurated Wednesday. The U.S. State Department said his re-election was neither free nor fair. In the weeks of turmoil, labor has been disrupted, the currency is sharply lower, and foreign reserves are dwindling. Kaylin Birch is a global economist at the Economist Intelligence Unit. She joins us live now from London. Kaylin, thank you so much for being with us. So if there's not a conclusive result on November 3rd in terms of the U.S. election, um, and if the current president refuses to accept the results, what happens to markets? Well, they're headed for a volatile few weeks and potentially a few months. And I think we're already seeing the reality of that being priced in the VIX volatility index, which effectively measures how um, fund managers expect a level of volatility in the market in any given time have already risen considerably up between four and six times the normal amount of volatility surrounding elections um, for this November. So we're already seeing warning signs of that. Um, I think probably the most likely scenario that we can expect to see is that we'll see an early lead for President Trump as in-person in -person votes are, are tallied and started to be released first, and that we'll see Mr. Biden then picking up a little bit of the lead um, and potentially pulling ahead later in the evening as more postal votes are, are counted. Now, that obviously, for the quotes that we just heard, raises a lot of important questions, given that the Trump campaign and Mr. Trump himself have already started to lay that groundwork for questioning the validity of the postal vote system in itself. And then we find ourselves in a serious dispute. Um, I think realistically, as I said, we could see that start to go on for at least weeks, if not months, by December 8th, states have a window that will have ended to handle any disputes around the election outcome within their states before they send their slate of electors to the Electoral College um, to vote on December 14th. So that doesn't really leave a lot of time. And I think we will see a severe amount of market volatility in that, in that few week span where the outcome uh, is still in question. And beyond the volatility though, beyond the volatility, especially when it comes to markets, what are the consequences of um, you know, a sitting president not accepting a result for uh, investors, just in terms of the economic risks of that, in terms of the long term? Yeah, well, short term and long term. I mean, the, the fear now is that we're already in a very uh, fragile economic recovery where we're going to see a bit of a plateauing in terms of the rate of recovery in the fourth quarter from the coronavirus induced crisis. And around kind of November, December time and heading into 2021, we'll already be in a bit of a, a fragile economic period. So a severe crisis like this, where we see questions around a presidential election, it's absolutely unwelcome. And I think to really be able to point to specific elements. So for example, would the US credit rating be downgraded? Would we see a correction, a downward slump of 10% uh, or more in stock markets? All of that really relies on how quickly the result, um, rather the, the um, dispute is resolved. 
And I think there, there is a pretty small chance, and I give it, you know, 10% or less, that we end up at Inauguration Day without an answer to who has won the presidential election. It's most likely to be because we find ourselves in, in protracted court battles where we have mm -hmm. state courts and federal level courts debating whether or not recounts are allowed or, or debating the validity of certain votes. That is, a, again, a small percentage, but a, a realistic chance we could get to January 20th and not have an answer yet. Now, were that to happen, I think, again, this is a worst case scenario, but the biggest economic risk there and where we would potentially see a credit rating downgrade or, or a, a longer term impact setting in is that we would then see a stalemate in Congress probably to not see Congress push forward any legislative progress uh, mm -hmm. until the dispute is resolved. That means a potential government shutdown. And when you think about the risk of kind of budgetary stalemate and a broader government shutdown in the context of a coronavirus recession, um, that is a real concern and one that would take months and maybe years to unwind.